Uh, Jacques de Blachet, thank you very much for participating in our interview of Digital Leagues. I would like to ask you uh, some questions. The first question is, what scientific career you did that it led to your discovery? Bonjour, Elif. It's a pleasure. Um, well, during this recent month, it became clear to me that um, in some way I start very early because understanding is for me not so much an interest for science or for understanding just like that. It's a vital necessity. In order to, to, to be in life, not to be afraid from the world, already from the young child, uh, it, was, it was my solution to try to understand. And in fact, it remains my whole life. I need that. And um, then it's not so much a surprise that um, I became a scientist. And now, uh, well, it, uh, it was not straightforward. I was a dyslexic child uh, and uh, had serious difficulty at school. But dyslexia, as many of this childhood uh, difficulty, is transformed with the time and becomes, uh, well, <laughs> in some way it becomes a strength. Yeah. And um, and so uh, now I was lucky to be able to have an excellent family. It's a very strong support of a family which is lasting still now. Um, to be able to go in good schools and to have a. a professor for my PhD of uh, first class, giving a kind of, offering a kind of science, not as it is done in most cases, but with much more freedom and much more, um, much more uh, creativity, requiring creativity. And so I was, I went from lucky part to lucky part and then I, was at the EMBL, at the European Laboratory for Molecular Biology at Heidelberg. And this is where I was trying to learn how to keep water in the electron microscope, which is not trivial because um, normal, we are made out of water, it's clear. Mm -hmm. and. Um, microscope, electron microscope works under vacuum and uh, water doesn't stay under vacuum, it evaporates. So all the 50 first years of electron microscopy has been done with dry specimen and we were trying, that was my project at Heidelberg, trying to have the water in the electron microscope. And for that, the idea is to freeze it, of course, to keep it cold so that it doesn't evaporate. And uh, But unfortunately, when uh, you freeze water, it becomes ice, and ice is as much damaging as no water in for mm -hmm. biological tissue. And so we had this lucky event that we found that uh, water can be vitrified, namely immobilized by cold without changing basically the structure. And this was the, the beginning of cryo-EM. And, uh, and then 35, or 35 years later, it, uh, it, uh, it, it brought the Nobel Prize. But uh, it was a long adventure. Of course, many people worked on that. Of course, my, my two colleagues with the Nobel Prize, uh, Richard Henderson, who, who was, I would say, was flying uh, above all this problem. problem. And, um, and uh, Joachim Frank, who was, who was the one who developed the the mathematics, the computer tools for dealing with this, with our data. 
and uh, of course many people at present there are 2,000 person working in cryo EM mm -hmm. uh, voila so mm -hmm. this is the uh, what I can say about the first question and tell us a little bit about what you can see actually with the cryo electron microscopy is it only the proteins bacteria or some other specimens as well yes the big thing with cryo em which oh which brought to the nobel prize is that we improve slowly the resolution and at some moment the resolution the, the image becomes so sharp so precise that you see atoms and when you see atoms, you are changing the game. Because when you see atoms, there is a name for that. It's chemistry. Before, it's not chemistry. Mm -hmm. For many years, the people, the chemists, were calling, were, were, were telling that our effort was blobology. You know, blobs, blob, 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 blob. That's a nice virus. Mm -hmm. uh, blobs, blob, blobs. And, uh, and then, you make it so fine that at some moment it's no more blobology but chemistry. And mm -hmm. so the chemistry came in. We are not chemists. All three are biophysicists, physicists and biologists, but not chemists. But now mm -hmm. the door is open to the chemist and chemists are good people. Huh? Mm -hmm. They know how to see how, why this atom sticks to this one and why this drug, drug is going to up, keep those two molecules apart. When, if they go together, they produce a disease. So the the whole capability of chemistry coming into biology, boof, that's a big thing. That's why the people in Stockholm thought that's that's good for an overprice. Exactly. Um, do you think that this discovery would help for the future applications of the medical uh, applications, discoveries in the future? Yes, I do. Of course, yes. With your technique, it becomes possible to see molecules within a cell machinery effectively connecting biology and chemistry. Do you think that the future of biochemistry is there for us at the intersection of the biology and chemistry? Because your background is biology, right? No, my background is physics. Physics. Yes, and what I have been, well, I'm a biophysicist, and I call I, I call this uh, this is the def uh, the definition of a biophysicist for me is some uh, somebody working in biology with the culture of a physicist. Uh, but now back to the previous question: relationship between biology and right, chemistry. Uh, well, you see, Feynman, a famous um, physicist, said one, if our civilization had one sentence to give to the next gen uh, civilization, I propose that this sentence should be the world is made out of atoms. Because he thought that just this simple message is the one which would help those who know nothing most for understanding the world. And so, you see, when you see atoms, when you bring chemistry into anything else, not only medicine, not only biology, but also in Material science, building better material for building house, this is just chemistry. Perhaps later it will be particle, uh, fundamental particle physics. No, no, I don't think so. No, 
No, we are for a long while happy with chemistry. Thank you. And for the last question, what are your advices to the young researchers? That's a complicated question. I imagine the young researcher now taking in the turmoil of present time research where it's necessary to produce very rapidly a lot of stuff, of stuff which is which is noticeable by by the press, by but I had the chance to make error, big errors, and um, at the same time to make our basic found, found, founding. Uh, so my advice is take your time. Take your time to think, to walk. The best place to have a new idea is not on your bench while pipetting, but it's for me, it's under the shower or uh, walking in the wood. Take your time. I know it's difficult in the present time system, but it's a bet. Uh, you, it's a bet you will, you will get, uh, you will win with time. Take your time. Thank you very much.